Hey everyone, what's up? It's Brian here. I hope you're all staying safe and entertained in quarantine. And I realized I never made the video explaining how I got my terminal setup to look the way it does on my Mac uh, back in my Python text RPG series a few years ago. So I wanted to today just make that video explaining how I got my terminal to look the way it does, why it's useful, especially for full-time software engineers and random other kind of cool things about styling it. And now Max officially runs ZSH instead of Bash. So we will redo this all on my ZSH terminal using iTerm2. Let's dive into it. All right, so now that I have my computer in front of me, uh, we can go ahead and get started on the prerequisites for making your terminal pretty. Note that this is a Mac specific tutorial. There's ways to do this in Windows. If you have ZSH on Windows, you can do everything beyond this first step. But this first step will be for Mac. And what we want to do is, rather than using this default terminal as we have here, uh, the one that comes installed on all MacBooks or any Mac OS device, we want to go ahead and download iTerm2, which is a free, fully featured terminal. You can see here in the dock, I have terminal and a very similar looking icon, iTerm. Uh, iTerm is what we're looking for. It's super easy to find. Uh, you just go Google iTerm2, click on this first link for iTerm2, uh, iTerm2.com, and then you can download this terminal. It's a little less lightweight and a little more battery intensive than the default Mac terminal. But this, if this is gonna be your daily driver, you want to be using this type of terminal. All right, so once you have that terminal installed, what you wanna do is you want to compare first. This is an example of how your basic bash terminal will look like. Um, there's nothing to it. You type ls, it doesn't have any you know, fancy completion. It's just a normal terminal. And on the bottom here, I have my fancy iTerm2 terminal running ZSH and a bunch of mods. So the thing that we need to get to now is how do we get it to look like this? Well, first, if you're on your standard bash terminal, what you want to do is switch to ZSH mode and on Mac it's on by default now. But to do that, you just make sure that you have ZSH installed. Now, if you don't have ZSH installed, um, feel free to go to oh my ZSH and then just copy this script from here ignoring the dollar sign and paste that into your terminal and you'll get oh my zsh now what that will let you do is you can type zsh and hit enter and then you will get your terminal running in zsh mode now my terminal on the top running in zsh already looks a little bit prettier because it's running the um, powerline font and powerline uh, oh my zsh mods so to grab that and make your terminal um, now focus just an i term to look like that what we want to do is we want to go and grab that from GitHub. So like we did in the previous step, if you don't already have oh my ZSH on a ZSH even default Mac, you want to go ahead and grab that from the website, or you can go to github.com and grab it there via curl or wgit. Now to get our ZSH to look so fancy, like the one that I have here, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and read through this tutorial to the section of themes. Um, now, when selecting a theme, note this part in specific that many themes require installing the Powerline fonts. So I use the Powerline fonts and a fancy theme to get mine set up like this. So let's first download Powerline fonts since that's a prerequisite for fancy themes. You can go ahead and if you are running a um, Mac or whatever, you can just go ahead and grab it through the commands there. Run sudo apt-get. If you don't have sudo apt-get, you can install that. You can do homebrew. Um, you can do any other method of downloading it. As long as you just somehow get these fonts into your system, you can even just manually download the folder from GitHub and install it, um, you know, font by font. And then once we have that, we'll go here and look at our themes. We have themes that Robbie Russell is the default that OMIZSH uses, but we want to look at Agnoster. That's the one that will use the Powerline fonts and get it looking like mine does. So this Agnoster theme will let us have these uh, Powerline font enabled um, graphics on our terminal, and then you can modify the colors even on your own through um, the different color schemes. So to set this up, basically it's what I said, you download one of the patch fonts of the Powerline fonts, um, and then you go ahead to the official repository for Agnoster, and what they recommend is exactly what I'm telling you to do, which is iTerm2 and Solarize Dark color scheme. So what you can do here to go ahead and grab this Agnoster ZH ZSH theme is you actually go into your um, ZSHRC file and then you look for the theme that says uh, this. So in this example, you can just copy this ZSH theme agnoster. 
we'll go into our terminal and we'll type vim wave dash slash dot z s h r c and now we'll enter vim um, if you have them already installed if you have a preferred other way of editing a text file feel free to do that um, this is you know i use vim not nano <laughs> so now that we have this zshrc open we can press i on our keyboard to enter insert mode in vim and then use our arrow keys to go up and down our file we see that this is the entirety of our file here uh, we can go up then and then go find where our zsh theme is if you go ahead here you can find our zsh theme is something here in this case um you know mine is actually called bullet train but that's you know a different mod you just want to grab agnoster first to get the basics of it set up alternatively if you are looking into customizing your theme a little bit more than agnoster go ahead and grab this bullet train theme that i'm using um, it's basically the same thing just a little more expandability all right so to close vim and save your changes now what you want to do is you want to hit escape on your keyboard to exit insert mode in vim type colon and then wq that means write and quit so write to your save and quit the file and your zshrc will have that now to update this you can do source wave dash slash zsh um, rc and then that will reload your zsh with the changes that you want um, i know that i'm doing this on a zh that already has a theme but if you don't already have a theme this will be the way to apply the theme now the last thing for my terminal is how do i get this fancy apple symbol all right, so to do the last step, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and install NeoFetch. NeoFetch is this command line system information tool um, that is a lot more powerful than you need and it's very configurable, but all you want to do is just go ahead and do a, a simple install. You can do a universal install and just download the very latest release, uh, run make install in your script, or you can do a git uh, install where you would just basically run git clone, type that into your terminal, boom, it's on your computer now. And then you can go ahead, CD into the folder and run make install. Um, everything on this GitHub repo is pretty self-explanatory, but essentially all I did was run that and then did another um, close iTerm and reopen it. And then you get your iTerm looking fancy like this. Why does it matter to make our terminals look fancy? Um, it's honestly just style. When you look at this continuously a lot throughout the day, it's nice to have something nice appealing to the eyes, pick a color scheme that is easy for you to look at so many hours of the day. Furthermore, um, it's kind of nice on ZSH and with all of these power line enabled things, I'm gonna type LS and immediately hit tab to see more contents of the folder. Um, I can type LS and then get out of the autocomplete and I can go, let's say to my website folder. And then in, in there I can see that it's running a GitHub branch um, to this directory and it is on the branch master. So you get some more info, some more useful information out of your terminal. Um, lastly, there's one more thing that I recommend installing if you are a software engineer and you plan to go through a lot of commands and you want a good way of keeping track of what commands you recently entered. Um, this is fuzzy search. So I press control R and I can go through and see what commands I have recently run. And then I can just go up to one that I want to reuse and then hit enter and then boom, it's now saved and ready to use. Um, so to grab FZF, this is the last thing I'm gonna recommend you always install. Just go to GitHub here and again, follow the instructions. It's very simple. Just, you know, using Homebrew. Uh, if you don't have Homebrew installed, go grab that too. Um, you just grab it from brew.sh and copy the script and paste it into terminal. Notice the trend, everything is pretty simple, guys. So just brew install FZF. You know, I recommend that you install the optional key bindings too. It's very useful. And then once you have that, um, just go ahead and follow the instructions. If that doesn't work, FCF has different um, troubleshooting and layout and examples and things that you can modify, but that's all unnecessary to me. All I did was do the homebrew installation, ran that, hit yes to the three things that it asked what I like to do, restarted my terminal and it's worked like a charm. All right, so there you have it. It's super sweet, easy, and very few mods you actually have to do to get your terminal working and looking as pretty as this one. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. See you next time.